Hi there, Carlos Garcia from Exceed Sales. I'm a certified tax loan consultant. And today I want to show you how you could import specific clients into your tax loan for the first time, but do it in a very smart way. So let's get right to it. The first thing is when you go into tax loan and your homepage, whether you're in a trial or if you're already purchased your license, and you're ready to import your client list. What's really nice is if you click on the client side here on the blue menu on the left, you go ahead and click on this import button. And this is what you would do essentially to start importing your clients. Now there are five steps for you to import your clients. First is to upload a CSV file. And the nice thing about Taxdome is that if you click on this little question mark, it will give you a help document, which, which will basically teach you how to prepare your client import data. Now what this doesn't tell you is how to do it in a smart way, which is I'll show you some tips and some best practices so that you can have really good data in your client's information that is searchable, that you can tag very quickly. And we'll talk about the importance of tags and how that's going to help you build really good automations in your tax loan. So the first thing I like to do is just download the sample CSV file, as you can see here. And you'll see that I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. And so we're just going to use this sample file as the actual list that we want to upload and so a couple of things that you want to know about this it does have to be a csv and i'll show you what format in just a second but clearly every uh, email does have to be unique so you want to make sure that you know for all your clients if you're going to use the same email address then uh, th the same username is essentially going to have access to all of these profiles. So you want to make sure that all your clients have the proper email addresses. But these are the essential, most important, you know, data fields that Taxdome wants in order to create a account and to create an actual uh, link, a contact. So the difference between account and contact is that the account is, in essence, the one profile where all the things go into, like your documents, your contracts, your organizers, the messages, etc. And the contacts are just the individuals that are going to have their own unique login in, uh, information so that they can separately sign the documents or they can separately fill out organizers or they could just individually navigate and uh, ha have access to the portal themselves if they want to upload documents. So. Everybody's going to have a unique username and password um, as long as they have a unique email to do so. Now, one of the things I want to show you is a couple of fields that you want to enter to the right of this. Now, clearly, you can add so many other custom fields. So let's talk about custom fields for a second. One thing that I like to do is I like to create columns or I encourage my customers to create columns um, that would represent a custom field. And so I typically use an acronym. So it would be account custom field would be ACF. And a contact custom field would be CCF. So a, co a contact custom field is essentially something that you want to add about the individual that's going to have access to the tax loan. So one example could be their social security number. All right. Another example of a contact custom field could be an individual address or a different, you know, mobile number. So they have their own unique uh, data field in their actual contact profile. So these would be some examples. You can add so many other things like, you know, marital status or just any in the, in things that would be important to know about the individual. This could be data that you could draw from the actual tax software that maybe TaxDome does not provide as a default field. And this is where you would create a custom field. We'll talk about custom fields in just a second. An account custom field would be something that would go to the entire account itself. So as you notice, the Simpsons family, this is just one account. But the reason why it's repeated in the instructions of when you're importing data, um, you can repeat the account and that's fine. It won't duplicate it. If anything, you're just telling Taxdome you want all these contacts to go into this same account. So an account custom field is something that would be important about the information for the actual uh, profile itself. An account custom field would be something you would want to have in the information page. This could be really good data about your customer. Like, for example, if a client wants to know, like if you want to know quick access, do they use QuickBooks desktop or do they use QuickBooks online? Do they have a specific EIN number? So that would be a good one that you could add in here. So their, their business um, 
EIN would be a, a good custom field example. You could also do a specific custom field for more confidential data that maybe you want to just kind of have available depending on how you want your team to access this. So if you, if you don't want your team to know this stuff, but let's say you're a solopreneur and you want to know their bank account info um, ID, and then you can maybe have like a, a bank account password. So these are, this is clearly all secure all, but these are just some creative ways for you to look at custom fields. I'll show you where the account custom fields would show up. So you would have to go into the settings and then you click on custom fields right here on the top, right? And then here are some examples of account custom fields. You could see, you know, are, are they a homeowner? What's their date of birth? Especially if it's a personal profile, phone number. And then you're going to notice that I put a couple of different text field names like 1120 or accounting or password or EIN, or if they're part of a bigger group, you can have a group name so if you type it in the search box it will show up which is really nice so uh, i would en encourage that you build as many custom fields as possible if you want it to be easily searchable from your search bar or if it's uh, something that you want to have that shows in the contacts uh, information page here is an example of what your custom fields would look like and where they would show up it's in the accounts info page you would also see a summary of all the tags that the client has, you know, and do they own or rent? You know, what is their date of birth? And then, you know, maybe the, what's a password to access their, their statements if you're going to do bookkeeping for them or something to that effect. So coming back to the custom fields, you can also add contact custom fields. And you'll see, for example, some folks have a secondary email or if you want to put in their date of birth. You know, again, if you want to have a text type custom field or an email type custom field, you would type the name of that field. So one example could be their mobile number, right? Or you can add so many different types of fields in here and this will help you. It's unlimited and this will help you build that into the spreadsheet first. So what's really nice about this is that when you're ready to import it, all of that can be mapped into the process itself, it will be really, really helpful. Okay, so you'll see that I've actually uh, spiffied up of this a little bit. You see that I entered some data in each of the fields, you know, contact custom fields, social security number, we're going to input that. Here's another one for individual mobile number. Now, I also changed the Simpsons uh, family into the Simpsons Inc. So we could pretend that we're also importing a business type of entity. And I added... Um, a few tags that I want these uh, to be imported as well into the custom fields. So in order for all of this to go into and map accordingly, I also have to go into TaxDome and make sure that I create a custom field for these specific items. So that way when I'm tagging it, this can connect that data into map it into the specific custom field. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So the next thing you want to do when you're ready to import is you need to save it as a CSV. It does have to say CSV UTF-8, comma delimited. That's the one that actually will be accepted when you're going to do the uh, import itself. Okay, so here we are. We're going to go ahead and import the actual file that we just saved as a CSV file. And as you can see, it starts automatically mapping everything that we did. So it says choose the CSV column to map the actual account. In this case, the first one was Simpsons Inc., so that looks right. And then it just wants me to see what do I want to map to the actual account. So remember, because these are this is contact information, we're not going to map any of this stuff uh, unless we do want to have a phone number show up into the profile. Uh, but in this case, we are going to map the 1040 as a tag. And I'm just going to find something that's already available. If it's not there, I'm just going to click here on new field. And I'm going to go ahead and create the same thing, right? Tag 1, 1040. And I'll show you later on how this all works out and how easy it's going to be for you to be able to tag stuff. So we got tag 2, 11, 20. And you can do as many of these as you want. 
Okay, so here if it says CCF, which would be a contact custom field, we're not going to map it because we are in accounts. When we get to contacts, we're going to add these over that way. Okay, so moving on. So the next thing that's going to ask you, of course, do you want to send them an invite to be able to log in on their first and second email? Uh, do you want them to be notified whenever something's being done in TaxDome? So keep in mind that if you can only do this in a mass quantity initially, so I would recommend you do turn it on. However, the risk is if you're not going to send an invitation to TaxDome because you're not ready to invite them yet, anything you do on their profile will notify them from TaxDome. So it is kind of tricky. It is a feature that they're working on. I'm sure that later on they're going to be able to allow you to bulk notify, turn on and turn off. But if you have this off initially, and you want to go back and make sure your clients are being not notified every time you do something on TaxDome, you have to manually turn that button on. So I do suggest to turn this on initially. And then your email sync, if you're planning to sync your email, you're going to get that as well. You're gonna, we're going to ignore this tag because we're going to use uh, the other system, and I'll show you how that works. You're going to designate the team members that you want to be able to have access to the imported accounts. And then you would create your folder and document. In this scenario, we're just going to use the default one. As we go and you're going to see that it's going to match anything that's green. Basically, is already automatically mapped for you. So that's a good thing. If you're following the exact way that TaxDome has it, then your format will in initially map right away. You don't have to manually do it. Now, this one that says phone did not map. You see it in yellow. So we're going to find the comparable one that would make sense to map. In this case, it would be phone number. And then same idea, we're going to skip anything because these were for the accounts. And this is why it's helpful to have these little acronyms to remind you what is going to be ma mapped into which specific type of account or contact. In this scenario, we're going to map the social security. If we don't see it, we do see one here. Let's go ahead and select it. Okay, and then let's see if there is a mobile number one that we could map. There it is. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and start the import. Okay, so you see that all the clients have now been imported, which is really nice. And you can click on each of the clients. And if you go into the info page, you will see right here um, the account info that was brought in and mapped from the actual CSV file. You see the tag, EIN number, RT, et cetera, et cetera. What's really nice is that let's say I want to do a bulk tag of all the ones that had a 1040. Now, if you type 1040 and you get the actual customers that were effectively mapped from the list as 1040s. So it should definitely match every single customer on this list. So you are able to see that and it's very, very nice very fast way for you to quickly tag your clients. So that is a very nice little hack that you can leverage. And in doing so, you're going to find yourself saving a lot of time. Same idea, 1120s, everyone who was tagged as an 1120, you would do the same for any of your specific tags that you have. This could be for tax, it could be for bookkeeping, it could be for sales tax, payroll, any other types of services. And this will very quickly allow you to import and quickly tag your clients and tax them. Now, what, what do you want to do after you've imported and done the tag work? The actual custom field will stay in the system unless you delete it. So it's important that you also, you also go back after you've done all the tagging to take out any custom fields that would not be otherwise useful for you as I'm doing right now. So that's, in essence, the trick that I wanted to show you of how to import your client list in a very smart way. If you want to reach out and you need some professional support with this, um, definitely email me. You'll see it in the description. And I'll send a few other links for you to get a TaxDome free trial if this is the first time you're thinking about using it. Or if you'd like to schedule a workflow diagnostic, I'm happy to offer any of these services. Uh, if you have any questions, send me a note. Looking forward to hearing your feedback. Thanks.